just got done editing this interview. You guys are going to love it. Before I do that, though, I want you to know that I'm going to be in the comments for the next 30 minutes or so answering your questions. If there's additional questions you want me to ask the CEO next time I interview them, leave them below. Or if you're just loving the data points I get CEOs to share, click the thumbs up button below. That's your way of telling me you're loving this stuff and I'll get you more of it. Additionally, again, I'll be in the comments answering any questions you have. All right, for 30 minutes, enjoy the interview. Hello, everyone. My guest today is Jag Singh. He's the CEO and founder of a company called Vid Camera. All right, Jag, you ready to take us to the top? I am. So what does this company do? What's the product? Vid is a memory media platform. So if I said to you, what can you remember from this day last year? You probably can't tell me much. Um, what Vid sort of stumbled onto is all of your memories already exist out there in the form of consumer data. So every time you take an Uber, stay at an Airbnb, spend on your credit card, that data that those companies are collecting on you, we can turn into memories. So we basically pull in that simple text metadata and auto-generate three-second video memories from that data and put it all into a calendar user interface. So essentially then you click on any day and you see exactly what you did on that day, basically remembering every moment of every day. Okay, so, um, it, I mean, is this analogous to when I take a bunch of pictures on my last trip to San Francisco? I can't remember where they are. I open my phone and I go to the photo app, but I go to the map view and it says you took all these pictures here at this time and that's an easier way for me to find photos instead of scrolling through my photo feed. Sure, I mean, that, that's definitely similar. But with that, I guess you took the photos manually. Here, you haven't even, you've done nothing. You've literally just opened Uber, taken an Uber. But next time you open Vid, there's an auto-generated memory of that journey without you capturing anything at all. Because we just turned the text metadata that you went from here to there into a, like a, an animation. Okay, interesting. All right, so give me some of the backstory here. So first off, uh, is the, it sounds like the company's pre-launch, correct? No paying customers? Yes, pre-launch, there's a beta. We're collecting email addresses for the beta right now. How many people are on the wait list? Um, there's at least 30,000 and we haven't really pushed. Um, we'll definitely cap out the Apple 100,000 limit on test flight. Okay, how did you build the 30,000 on the list? So we have um, influencers signed on to the platform to use the platform from day one. They have a combined following of around 375 mil. Um, that's across Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Okay, so who's, your biggest, think, who's the biggest star that's in, signed up? Um, I mean, there's a number. I don't want to say this person's bigger than another. There's people that are like number three, four, two on TikToks, people with 20 mil plus on one platform alone. How did you incentivize them to sign up? And is it a real sign up? Like, or are you just basically using their name, hoping that you can get them engaged once you launch? No, I mean, it's a real, it's a year long contract. Um, and it's not really, we didn't need to incentivize them that much. They're kind of telling me that we're waiting for the next wave in social media. It's become stagnant, it's become boring. Um, there needs to be a new type of content. And that's what Bid is essentially is called an automated video, like an automated movie of your life, if you like. So it kind of takes the editing pain away from a lot of these influencers as well, um, which is something they're definitely interested in. What are they committing to in the year long contract and what are you giving them to make that commitment? Sure, they're posting weekly and then they earn tokens because the whole thing's crypto based um, and they earn the currency. And there's, there's a lot of ways for them to monitor. So you just go to Starbucks and buy a Starbucks and then take an Uber and those brands can then add swipe up links to your auto generated memories. And every time someone swipes up and books an Uber, then you earn part of that. It's a whole new revenue stream for them. And that's what they're keen for long term. Yeah. So, and so getting more in the platform as well. Yeah. So EOS, right, is working with their first, their first dApps, which is essentially a version of Facebook, which is the more you post, the more tokens you earn, the utility value goes up. It sounds like you're building something similar, but you're seeding it with phone data based off Uber trips, where you were, other, other pieces of metadata. I think voice that I think that what they're working on is going to be largely sort of text based, like a more like a Twitter competitor, I would say. Um, and Bid is sort of more Instagram-esque. We were previously building on, on EOS. Um, so I know the guys, but we're moving over to ontology now. Okay. And help me understand how, how you funded this. So it sounds like, I mean, do you have a development team? Um, yeah, we do. Uh, I, we self-funded, uh, two mil, um, my brother and I, uh, we had a previous successful exit. Um, and since then we had a, we did a token sale pre-sale. Um, and now we're doing a convertible note with select partners. So let's break that down real quick. How much did you and your brother put in, uh, just equity based off your past successes? Uh, two million USD. Oh, okay. Then on okay. So then, what was the token issuance on top of that? So then, the token sales raised um, well over twenty million. 
um, private and public people like ontology, NGC, a lot of big funds have come into the token sale. Where, when did you do that token sale? Um, it's now just finished and it ran for about three months. Okay. So you just did that. I mean, literally right now. Yes. Okay. Um, how are you look a lot of this, you know, I've, I've had a lot of people on that have been token sales. Some of them are amazing. Some of them, it just feels extremely scammy. Right. So h- how did you, w- what's the storyline you're putting out there to get people to give instant utility value to your token? Sure. Well, the only way an advertiser can buy any advertising within the vid ecosystem is by buying this token. So when that, when Uber, for example, wants to add a swipe up to an influencer's uh, auto generated memory, they have to buy the token to then buy the swipe up. So it's essentially like saying to people, you know, Facebook earned 55 billion last year in advertising revenue. It's your chance to buy into that ecosystem. And the only way then an advertiser can buy ads is through you. So that's sort of, that's the utility of the token. The so whole no, ecosystem but no offense, right? So why does anybody care? You don't have millions of users. Sure. I think the people that care and the people that have bought the token see the, the upside of the platform and then the influences that are signed on and just the obvious numbers involved, even if 1% of their followers convert, um, 370, that's 3.75 mil users. That's more users than even Ethereum has had max transactions. So then the sentiment around the token, I guess people are kind of, um, factoring that in as well. If a token does have that many users, it's more users than a chain even. And the sentiment around the token will be great. How much of the 20 million uh, that you just raised, do you, do you plan to convert to fiat to pay things like developer salaries, company expenses, things like that? All of it. Okay. So this to me is a massive red flag. Anytime I hear a founder that does a token sale, who's saying, look how valuable our token is that they then raise all the money, then convert all of it to fiat. To me, that just screams red freaking flag. If you believed in your token value, you'd keep all of it in the token. No, not in our token. Obviously it's raised in another token, all of our tokens. So the way that our token sale works is we sold 1% um, of the total supply. So we own 99%. So I think that proves enough um, that we believe in the value of the token. Our token sale actually goes on for five years more once the app launches. So I basically analyzed other people's token sale and we thought, I'm, I'm personally an investor. My Instagram is at investor. I get decks day and night. That's why I was doing angel investing before founding vid. Um, and I looked at token sales and I didn't like them. They seemed scammy front loaded as is back loaded. We sold a tiny proportion of our token and the rest of the token sale goes on for five and a half years and in line with advertiser growth. If you look at Snapchat and Instagram, that's how long it takes out to build out an advertiser economy in a new platform. And it's in, it's in line with that. Um, but in terms of we converted the ETH or the other cryptos that we've collected into fiat because the market is volatile. And I think it's, it's disrespectful and it's irresponsible to investors to um, basically, if say if ETH tanks and then all of a sudden we lost that capital, I, I feel that's irresponsible. Well, yeah, but the only, so reason, it's the, only reason, it's the only reason it has a value today is because that's what Ethereum is worth. <laughs> you can't argue for the upside on one side and then you're protecting on the downside on the other. That's ridiculous. Um, we're arguing on the upside of our own token, um, not on ETH. So I personally, my belief is that everyone in the top 10, um, maybe bar ETH and Bitcoin will be switched out in the next, uh, 12 to 24 months. I mean, the thing I have a hard time getting my head wrapped around those, you basically just told me you sold 1% of your tokens for $20 million, which implies that you're worth $2 billion today. This is just, it's insane. So, so there's a burn. So if the price drops below, so the, all the rest of the supply will be burned. So there's a whole there's a whole ecosystem behind it. Um, Tell me how that works. I don't so understand that. That, that, could be the whole, that could be the whole value. Twenty mil could be could be the entire value if it doesn't hit a certain price. The rest will just be. Burned. Wait, Jag. Tell me how you. Sh- I'm, I've never heard that before. I'm just uneducated there. How does that actually work? Sure. So it's basically based on a on a price. So if the price drops below one dollar. Um, then the rest of the supply will just continually be burnt. So we'll take the average price from the exchanges on any given day and there won't be a sale that day. It will just be burnt, 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 burnt. Oh, burn. I see, I see, I see. Okay, so the max upside you have is keeping you and your brother, or your, you know, the founders, keeping 99% of the tokens. But if you- foundation, so it's not, it's not, they're not our tokens. It's like how the company runs. They belong to the foundation. Okay, the to the foundation. Who owns the foundation? The foundation's owned by a number of people. It's not just us, all the team. Okay, how many people are on the team today? Uh, 19. Nine zero? 19, one nine. One nine, okay. And how many are engineers? Um, six. Okay, six. And so how do you, I mean, look, the, um, y- you know, obviously you, you build this thing out, right? You have 30,000 people on the wait list. When, when, I mean, when is go time? When is official launch? Um, within a month now, we'll have the beta and out to those when we, we start the influence of big, big push in the next few weeks, 
cap that out at 100,000 and get the beta out to those 100,000 people, get out some bugs and then worldwide launch on the main iOS store. And so what incentive does, let's let's just, let's say Kim Kardashian is, right? Someone you've signed this contract with, right? We're hypothesizing here, right? Let's say she was. What incentive does she have to drive people out of her Instagram where she already has a massive following into this new tool that like nobody's on that she has to build a following from scratch on? Sure. I think the main reason people will use it first is just because it solves a problem. Um, the ability to remember every moment of every day. It's kind of like Snapchat. They came about, it was just disappearing communication between one and two people. Then eventually you realize all your friends are here and you start to post there. Initially it's a tool and then network effects kick in. And, and what if network effects don't kick in? Then it'll still always be a tool. But isn't the critic, I mean, no one, even if people are posting every day automatically because you help them because you pull metadata from their phone on their last Uber ride or the last place they were, if no one's viewing it, they're not going to keep doing it. Not necessarily because you can export and post anywhere else. That's the point. The point is that it's a unique form of content um, and you can, exp- you can post it on Instagram, Facebook, wherever you like. Well, sure, and but I can share a Facebook, I can share an Instagram post to Facebook right now. Sure. And it has the bid watermark in the corner, which is how TikTok grew to their 74 billion valuation and 500 million users and how that face app, which I'm sure you saw like a few months ago, made everyone old, blew up to number one in a week. Um, When great content's created and it has a watermark in the corner, it creates a simple viral loop that I see that content, I want to create similar content, I go and download the app. Yeah, have you studied all the ones that that failed? I mean, yet we hear about the breakout ones, but you can't just have success bias, right? Why are you going to be that next one? Because we create beautiful content in seconds. But everyone would say that. Sure, of course. I mean. I mean, you yeah. know this, you're an angel investor, right? I mean, you probably get, you got, probably got I, pitched you know, on all this stuff that, all the time. That, so like when exactly, I see, I was, when I see you and I've only known you for 11 minutes and 24 seconds and counting, right? What I see is a guy that's had a successful exit. You've been, you've been an angel investor in other companies. So you understand both sides. You're well connected. You understand marketing and sales and you've built a tool that does have real tech. There's a tech stack there that brings real value to different form of content. And the challenge you now have is how do you take all of that and seed this thing so you do get virality kicking in? Like that's the big next step. But I also would say that's the biggest risk in a company like this. Of course it is. Um, and pre-launch, we're not like willing to lay out our whole strategy in a podcast, but I, I can assure you, we understand that risk and it's something that we're very, very focused on. Yeah. So what, when, when will we know if it's working or not? So in six months, I'm going to go, I wonder how that Jag guy's doing. In the first, in the first three months, we'll definitely know. Okay. And we so, definitely are trying to become, get to the number one on the app store within the first few months. Okay. Got it. So you'll, you define success short term as in the next kind of three to six months. If you, when you launch, you hit number one on the app. We'll see, do people like it? Um, is it working? Uh, pretty, pretty rapidly. We already know because we did a test launch. I think this is something that I should clarify actually. So we already know the virality works. So we did a test launch when just 10% of the app was launched. We got 30,000 users straight onto the app store chart um, within a few weeks before we took it down. We were just testing the AI, making sure things were working, making sure again, the viral loop was working when people were posting out, but people were downloading the app because of the quality of content they were seeing. Yes, they were. Okay. So, so we're uh, able to plot out like, that K factor pretty accurately. What, what is it right now? Obviously it's above one. It sounds like, what was it in that small test period? Exactly. I'm not willing to reveal exactly what the number was, but yes, it was obviously above one. How many and of those 30,000 are like, still posting new content today on a, da- like on a daily basis? Say that again, sorry? How many of those 30,000 that downloaded it in that short period are still posting today? So that uh, app is no longer available. We turned it off. But um, within those few weeks, people were re- repeatedly posting again and again. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, listen, I will be following along. It'll be a lot of fun to kind of uh, see how it does. And uh, it sounds like if it, if it works well, it's a ver- basically version of Facebook where there's not one central authority making all the upside. It, the, the creators, the influencers, you, the foundation, the engineers, everyone makes money. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll see what happens. Very good. Let's wrap up here, Jack, with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? My favorite business book? Zero to one. Number two, is there a CEO? Is, by the way, is Peter, did Peter put in any of the 20 million? No, but he is invested in block one. Uh, voice. Yeah. Interesting. Um, number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Um, Bill Gates. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building a vid camera? Online tool. I like Figma design tool. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Um, seven. And what's your situation? Married, single kiddos? Single. Okay. Any, no kids running around? No. <laughs> you never know, man. Uh, and how old are you? I'm 30. 30. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Um, patience. 
Guys, patience is key. VidCam, we did a beta launch a while ago trying to invent a new kind of social network where content creators get upside, advertisers get upside. There's not one kind of corporate conglomerate that gets all the upside like we see in Facebook's case. He's building this obviously on blockchain to do this. Just did a $20 million token sale where they sold 1% of their tokens. That obviously, uh, the, the in order to stay at that kind of economics though, the app has to take off. The utility value has to continue to go up. Otherwise, they're backstopping that with the other 99% the foundation still owns. Him and his brother and his family put in $2 million bucks to see the initial tech stack, the growth. Again, 19 people on the team today, six of those engineers. Jag, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you very much. These CEOs rarely give these kinds of interviews. I hit them hard, I get the data, and I want to do it more. So if you want to get more of this stuff, make sure you subscribe up here. And then additionally, go check out one of my other CEO interviews right now.